Um, just a couple of reminders before we get started. You do have uh, review sections due tomorrow. Um, there will be three of them. We start at classwork today in class. Um, we'll have like 15-ish minutes left in class to work on it. So you probably won't have any homework. And if you do, it's like one or two problems left. <coughs> um, so if you didn't finish, that'll give you a chance to. Uh, we'll have a quiz over them tomorrow. We do have a chapel day. I'm 80% sure of it. Um, and then your midterm review numbers 1 through 17 are due on Monday. OK? All right. So we're going to start 6.2 bisectors of triangles. The gist of this entire lesson, you're going to learn a couple of words. And then we're finding the center of a triangle. It's literally what we're doing. There are two types of centers of a triangle. I know that a lot of times we think of the center as the middle, but there's like a scientific definition of a center. Can anybody guess what the definition of the center of a circle is? No? Give me a sentence. What makes this the center? It is the same distance from each of the sides. Yeah, it's the same distance all the way around. Good. So in a triangle, that's difficult because if you said, there are two types of centers. One where it's the same distance from all the sides and one where it's the same distance from all of the angles. That's it. Two types. I'll teach you both of them. Okay? So to begin, we talk about a word. It is your fill in the blank. When three or more lines, rays, or segments intersect in the same point, that is called concurrent. You will hear this word a lot in the next few lessons. Concurrent. All right, so concurrent. Where they intersect. The point of intersection of all of these lines, rays, and segments is called the point of concurrency. We'll see it pop up. Here's a line, a ray, a segment. Where they intersect, I put in green, it's called the point of concurrency. You'll also want to highlight that. <clears throat> We're learning two points of concurrency today. They're called a circumcenter and an incenter. So, where is the center of the triangle? The first one we're going to talk about is called a circumcenter. It's where the perpendicular bisectors intersect, and the distance from the circumcenter to the angles is congruent. So these are your two blanks under the word circumcenter. So where the perpendicular bisectors intersect and the distance from the circumcenter to the angles is congruent. So the two important parts would be that it is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. And then I will request you to highlight from the circumcenter to the angles is going to be congruent. So from the center to the angles is congruent. This is the first type of center we're going to talk about. There's a picture of it at the bottom. There's a theorem with it that explains <coughs> that from the center to the angles is going to be congruent. Um, the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the vertices of a triangle. What does equidistant mean, class? Equidistant. Equal and distance. Good. All right, and then where are the vertices of a triangle? The vertex, well, yeah, it's plural for vertex. So A, B, C. So if you look, I would like you to highlight on your paper because A, P, P, B, P, C will all be congruent because P is a circumcenter. So I do want you to highlight that on your picture. You also just need to use your common sense. Look at the blue lines. Do the three blue lines look like they're the same measure? Not even close. FP is like teeny weeny, and then DP is larger 
Okay, so they're not going to be congruent. Whereas my red lines from the center to the angles, they do look congruent. All right, so this is the first type of center. Normally, I would hand you out a protractor and we would prove it to each other. We're going to flip to the next page. <clears throat> I'm not going to hand you a ruler just to save on time and energy, but you will follow directions. Step one, write which angle is acute, right, and obtuse. Go ahead and do that. We won't be highlighting for a few minutes. <coughs> On the next page. Oh, sorry. So label which one is acute, right, obtuse. And then you're going to find the midpoint of each side approximately. Please don't be overthinking this. All you're going to do is find the middle, put a dot. Find the middle. Sorry. Find the middle, put a dot. Find the middle, put a dot on all of them. This triangle as well as this triangle. Be as close as you can, but on all of them. Be as close as you can, but please don't overthink it. So on this triangle as well, this one. On all of them. Oh. All the sides. Oh, wow. You're finding the middle on each side of each triangle. All right, so because a circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect, <coughs> a perpendicular bisector goes through the midpoint. So what you just did was label all of the midpoints. Then after finding all of the midpoints, you would draw a perpendicular line with a ruler. Um, I did it on my screen. You're not going to do it right now. But what you did, or what you would do, is you would draw a line through the midpoint, because the midpoint is where it bisects the line, and it would form a right angle with the side. So go ahead and draw this line to the best of your ability. Draw a perpendicular line through our midpoint. <clears throat> to the best of your ability, it will look 90 degrees, hopefully. You might want to do this in pencil, because if you make a mistake, you cannot go backwards. All right, so we would do it again with our next one. Okay, so you're drawing a line through the midpoint, which is right here, and it needs to form a right angle with this line GH. And we would do it again with our next one. Don't move on to the next triangle yet. It's a very important distinction. Where is my circumcenter? So where they connect will be my circumcenter. Is it outside, inside, or on the triangle? Inside. So what is extremely important, number one, what kind of triangle is this? Acute. Acute circumcenters are inside. You need to make sure yours is depicted inside. So you need to go back. Yours are not really 90. I knew it would be more than Kind of more this way. No. And then do the last one. It should go through that center. So your circumcenter is inside. You do need to write that it is inside. It is important. So in an acute triangle, the circumcenter is inside. Let's look at the next. What kind of triangle is our next triangle? Obtuse. obtuse. So we would do the same thing. This is obtuse. You would draw a line straight through the midpoint, and it should look 90. I'll bring up all of them. Your 
score should look similar to this. I know I missed one of my midpoints, but that's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. This one needs to especially occur outside of the triangle. Okay. All right, and then the last, what kind of triangle was this one? Right triangle. So if you look at this side over here, this is approximately the middle. All right. It is a perfectly vertical line, so a perfectly horizontal line will cut through, make a 90 degree angle. With the bottom, <coughs> or sorry, with the side and then the bottom. So with a right triangle, where is the circumcenter? Where does it look like in my picture? Well, just on the triangle. That's why it was very important to draw the first one correctly. So you will need to know that obtuse circumcenters are outside, acute circumcenters are inside, right circumcenters are on the triangle. All right, we're going to move on to the next. All right, here's what they look like in your book. These are different, different triangles than what you just did. But acute, again, the circumcenter is inside. Right, the circumcenter is on the side. Obtuse, the circumcenter is on the outside. So can the circumcenter be inside of the triangle? Yes. The second type of center can only be on the inside. But just because a center is on the inside, it can still be a circumcenter. Some people are just thinking it's automatically the other one. Because the other one is called an in-center. We talk about circumcenter. The other one's called an in-center. The in-center, which you have two blanks for, are where the angle bisectors intersect. And the distance from the in-center to the sides is congruent. So you do want to highlight from the in-center to the sides is congruent. Because on the other, from the circumcenter to the angles was congruent. So <coughs> circumcenters are formed by perpendicular bisectors. From the circumcenter to the angles are congruent. Whereas an in-center are formed by angle bisectors. And from the in-center to the sides are congruent. So a circumcenter is a center because it is in the center of the angles. In-centers are in the center because they're in the center of the sides. So that's the main difference between the two. So we're going to look at the bottom picture. The in-center of a triangle is equidistant from the sides. Go ahead and highlight what three sides would be congruent in this picture. These sides would be congruent because from the center to the sides are congruent in and in center. So you should have highlighted the three sides I highlighted, three lines. All right? And then highlight the in-center is always inside of the triangle. So the in-center is inside. It is right under the two terms. Yep. All right, and then you guys can fill in the blank using your own notes. We won't take the time to do it. We're going to go to the math, okay, which is on the same page. In the figure shown, QP equals 2X plus 9. Q 
QM equals 5X minus 3. Find QN. Here's what we need to find out. Do we have perpendicular bisectors or do we have angle bisectors? We have angle bisectors. So which property is formed by angle bisectors? We got an in-center or a circumcenter? In-center is formed by angle bisectors. In an in-center, I would like you to be writing these things down. We're deciding. In an in-center, from the center to what is congruent? From the center to, is it the angles or the sides? It's the sides. Are going to be congruent. So from the center to the sides. You can also kind of use your brain. The red ones don't really look the same measure, but the blue ones on my screen do. All of those are going to be congruent. All right, here we go. So QP is this line right here. It's going to be congruent to the other lines I've highlighted. QM is this line right here. It's a part of the congruent lines. So if they're congruent, what can we do? Set them equal. So we got 2x plus 9 will equal 5x minus 3. What's my smaller x? 2x, so I'm going to subtract it. So I got 9 equals 3x minus 3. What do I do from here? <coughs> Add 3. So 12 equals 3x. Divide by 3, what does x equal? 4. Is 4 my final answer that I circle? No, it said find the length of QN. QN is going to be congruent to both of these other sides. So I can plug my 4 in to either of the other sides, and that will be the answer to QN. So then we do 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 9, which is 17. So QN is equal to 17. You can always plug it into the other just to double check. And you'd get 5 times 4, which is 20, minus 3, which is 17. Perfect. In the figure shown, P is a circumcenter. So the circumcenter to what is congruent? The circumcenter to either the angles or to the sides? Which one do we think? To the angles. So all of the lines that go from the center to an angle, the center to an angle, the center to an angle, oops, missed, they're going to be congruent. So it gave us PY, which is right here, and it gave us PZ, which is right here. They're both a part of the congruent lines, so if they're congruent, what can we do? Set them equal. Once I find my x, where do I plug it in? Yeah, to one of the side lengths, or lengths in general. So I could do this one right here, 5 times 15 minus 4. What's 5 times 15? 75. Minus 4 would be 71. So that means px will also be 71. I could have also plugged it in over here. What's 4 times 15? 60 plus 11 would be 71. All right, you guys are going to flip to the back page and try the last one by yourself, and I will check it with you. So first off, do we have a circumcenter or an in-center? Why do we have an in-center? We do have angle bisectors. All of these angles are bisected. Perfect. So if we have a, an in-center, that means from the center to the sides are congruence. So they gave us NE and they gave us NF. So they are equal. So if we set them equal, what do we get for X? 
x equals 7. I plug it back in. What's 6 times 7? 42 plus 1 is 43. So nd will be equal to 43. And then a lot of you stopped on this one, and you did not have to. You guys can do this problem. Can n be, n be, right here, be 40? Explain. How many of you think yes? How many of you think no? I agree. Use your common sense. Act as if we're talking to a fourth grader. If n d is 43, why could n b not be 40? Because longer. It's longer. So what should the number be? Bigger. Bigger than 40. It could be 50. Could be 60. Could be 44. We don't know. But it surely is not 40 because the 9 is longer, which means it needs to be a bigger number than the one that we just found. So you should have a no and then the reasoning. All right?